What you're looking at may not make much sense to you right now, but if this works the way I want it to, this could be really, really cool. Basically, my plan is to take an off-the-shelf 3D printer, in this case, the, uh, the Ender 3, which is about 180 bucks at this point. It's one of the cheapest on the market that's still a decent build size, and completely gut it and turn it into a DIY SLS 3D printer. If you don't already know, SLS stands for Selective Laser Sintering, and basically instead of working like a traditional 3D printer where you have a, uh, an extruder that uh, heats up and melts plastic filament and then lays it down layer by layer, uh, an SLS machine takes three, uh, uh, plastic powder, uh, lays it out one layer thick at a time, so you know, 0.2 millimeters thick, for example, and then a laser goes overhead and melts only the, the part that specific layer of the part um, and then it spreads another layer of powder over top of that and melts the next layer so you end up with a part that is made out of just that lasered and melted material the benefit of SLS printing is that you don't need support material because everything is a hundred percent supported because there's un uncentered powder around the part so there's no need for any additional support material Traditionally, these machines cost in the neighborhood of tens to fifties to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, so if my plan works to take a $180 printer and turn it into uh, the equivalent of a $10,000 printer, I would be very happy. All told, between the $180 of the printer, uh, about 100 bucks for a suitable laser module, and call it 50 bucks in other materials, uh, this whole thing would cost under $300 to make. This is where I'm at right now. You'll have to excuse the filming location because these rods hang over the edge. I need somewhere to have this that it can hang over and my shoe rack was the easiest place that didn't take up my entire desk. So basically what I have so far is I have the bin here. I have the motor and the slider mounted. I actually had a print plate in here mounted, but I took it all it out to reprint it with some different details. Um, I have the what I'm calling you know what will be the Z motor in here. I know that with a spring coupler, this isn't the best orientation. I'm going to be changing out this coupler for a fixed one in the future, so that's okay. And at the top, I have the wiper system. So I used I don't have the Ender three yet. So I used one of the other printers I have, the Tronc CX-1. I used its X-axis, and I think this was its Z-axis, I'm not sure. Um, but I basically just repurposed all the different parts and built this slider. I didn't put the belt in yet, but I have provisions to do so, because I have the motor there and the idler here. Basically, the way this will work is this will be parked on the end here. You'll have your print area here and the reservoir here, so it'll... Be, the print bed will be basically flush with the top here, and this print bed will be all the way down here. That's just a foam insulator that's in there. And each layer, the, this bid will rate... Away. After each layer, this bin will raise up the equivalent of whatever the layer height is, so 0.2 millimeters or so, pushing up 0.2 millimeters of powder on the top. And this bin will lower 0.2 millimeters making room for the powder to be spread. Then this wiper, which will have an additional piece hanging down, will sweep across, pushing the powder from this bin into this bin and flattening it out so that you end up with a new surface to be lasered. And then, I don't have a limit on this yet, but... And then above it, there'll be the XY gantry so that the uh, laser can do its thing and center the next layer. And then it'll repeat, this will drop down, this will raise up, this will wipe, go back to park, laser, and repeat until the part is finished. I'm designing this and trying to build this whole thing out of parts I already have, so I have to spend as little money as possible. So some of the parts that you'll see look a little weird and my design choices are a little odd, but it's just to accommodate the fact that I'm using all reused parts. Like these bearings I have, I've had them for years. You can tell they're a, a little grimy, a little rusty on the outside, but the inside still works great. They still slide, so I'm still gonna use them. All these screws are actually leftovers from, uh, I have a Prusa Mark III that I've upgraded to the Mark III S recently. So between 
the original build and then the upgrade kit, I have a bunch of extra screws that it came with. So those are what I'm using for all the fasteners. And I'm just using 3D printed parts. These are all parts, I was running out of filament on this one, that's why it's, fin that's why it's only half done, because I ran out of filament uh, at this point. Same thing with this piece. This is the print bed that was in there. I ran out of filament right here. So I've since gotten more filament. Amazon delivered that today. So I'm able to continue working on this project. If this ends up working the way I want it to, this could completely change things because this would make SLS printing available for the general consumer. Okay, so I wanted to hop into Fusion real quick and give you guys a quick rundown of the design and some of the design choices I made. Uh, some of the parts uh, look a little weird because I'm doing my best to 100% repurpose the original uh, Creality Ender 3 so I can use as many of its parts as possible so I have to buy as few extra parts as possible. I started with an Ender 3 model that I downloaded offline. Then I added basically anything that's below this area is my own design. Everything above this area except for here is all uh, just the Ender 3 redesigned. So my goal is to use the Z axis as the Y axis and the X axis will remain the same. And I'm just going to plug the Z axis motor into the Y axis of the driver board. And then I'll go into the firmware and just change the steps per millimeter so that it, everything is lined up and nice. So that it will, when it wants to do, you know, a Y move, it'll turn, turn the lead screw and push it this way instead of doing, uh, instead of moving the bed. Now that we're in Fusion, it's a little easier for me to explain to you how this whole thing works so you can see the finished model. Um, I've hidden the actual body that's the, I've colored it wood, so you can see the, this is the part that I just showed you. But, so basically it'll be, this does its thing, laser, laser, lasers, and centers the plastic that's on top of this plate. And then this plate drops down by the, however, whatever the layer thickness is, so 0.2 millimeters, for example and then this plate will rise up by that same amount. And then a wiper that's not modeled here will swipe across and level out the, uh, the plastic powder. And then it'll go back to its part position and then the laser will send to the next layer and it'll repeat over and over again until the part's done. So to keep these in sync, I'm using uh, this sort of belt clamp system here and then that'll ride over these bearings. And then the same things on this side, I just didn't flip it in the model, but this will be rotated 180 degrees so that both belt clamps point inward. So everything should be kept totally in sync so that as this one moves you know, down, this one moves up and vice versa. The wiper mechanism, which isn't modeled here, is uh, constructed out of, I think I mentioned before, the Tronc CX-1 and I don't have a model for that at the moment, and I just haven't gotten around downloading one yet. So that's not pictured here, but at some point I will construct that out of the parts, and then I will insert that here and so that I have a complete model that I'm always referencing. Here's a close-up of that belt system I was talking about. So it just slides in there and it holds it in place. Now, if you think this is backwards, it's not because the belt doesn't have to actually be pulled by uh, any kind of motor with a pulley or anything like that. So I have it oriented so that the smooth side of the belt is running over the smooth side of the bearing. Well, all, bearing has all smooth sides, but you get what I'm saying. So that there's no um, teeth issues. It's all, everything is smooth. The teeth are their only purpose here is just to secure these parts. All right, I think I'm going to cut part one right there. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what the schedule of this project is, so there may be a huge gap between part one and part two, or it may come out in a week. I have absolutely no idea. Um, if you like this video, though, consider uh, leaving a like and possibly subscribing to follow up with this. And uh, if you have any thoughts on my project or any ideas or suggestions or just 
anything you want to say, feel free to leave it in the uh, comments below. Thanks.